So today's the big day. Of how are you feeling? I'm feeling confident with uh, this foreign uh, barrister I've got in from uh, South Australia. So that's what I'm called according to the law of cross jurisdictions. I'm a foreigner from South Australia in legal terms. I'm entitled to practice here because I'm entitled to practice in South Australia. So I've been rereading all of the Victorian laws, all of the Victorian practice rules to make sure that I don't fall foul of this foreign jurisdiction. <laughs> Quite looking forward to it. It'll be interesting to see because it's been nearly 18 months uh, since uh, uh, the Milo event and there's been, obviously it's just uh, you and uh, Ricky Turner on, yep. on, trial, on trial now, others were able to get uh, diversions or charges dropped. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people involved. It shows you, in my opinion, the um, the incident isn't as serious as they try and claim. If you're giving out diversions for assaults and violent crimes, I think that uh, that shows that it's it's not as serious as they're trying to trying to claim it is. Um, and hopefully today, um, today's not much going to happen on our side, but it's going to be a prosecution delivering that case. Yeah, the prosecution case is obvious and straightforward. Uh, it's all captured on video from very many different angles, so what occurred factually is not in dispute and can be seen. It's whether or not uh, Mr Erickson was entitled to do what he did uh, when he was under attack. That will be the decision in a day or two. Well, we'll see things, how things pan out today. Well, we'll let you get in now and yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. So it was a very undramatic morning. That's true, Tim. Uh, look, we're here. Uh, the prosecution wanted to cut deals. They gave us an option, me and Ricky. Ricky's in there at the moment trying to cut a deal, maybe if it's a good enough deal. It seems to me the prosecution don't want to go to trial. The trial date was set for today. They were going to try and push it off to August, but John Bolton uh, fought that, so now we've got the trial back on. Um, we're going to go back in after lunch, about 2.30pm and see what the prosecution want to do because this case can be 50 50 and, and I'm, I'm a bit of a kind of a glass half empty kind of guy i'm always looking on the, the negative side and the negative side is yes there is a chance i'll be convicted but there is also a bigger chance i'll be found not guilty due to circumstances that happened in the actual affray and uh john's confident of me actually winning this case like i said i don't want to be overconfident but the troll is back on and the prosecution aren't happy about it that's for sure. And you're not tempted to cut a deal at all? I'm not cutting no deal, mate. They come into my house about 10 days after the Milo event, back in 2017. It was the 29th of December. They come into my house at 7 a.m., raided my home in front of my family, um, and then put bail conditions on me where I can't be a political activist. John Bolton won that. We actually changed the bail conditions so I could meet with my... Uh, um, you know, with Ricky T and, and the other Crooks Conflicts guys, so we can actually do political activism. Uh, and then I had the police come to my house on multiple occasions using the bail conditions where I had to reside at my home address, not house arrest, but reside, and they used that to then intimidate me from going to other events, saying, oh, if you go, you might breach your bail. And so they've used this case as a pretext to stop me from being politically active. So, no, I'm going to take this to the end. I believe I'll win, uh, but like I said, you never know all these things, how they pan out, but there's always appeal. I can appeal this case. So we'll see how it goes. It's three to four days, I think, maybe two. We'll see how it goes. And I'll give you the final judgment maybe Wednesday, and we'll find out if I'm innocent or guilty. We'll stay tuned for that. So the trial's finally taken place, or the evidence, the defense and prosecution have made their cases. How are you feeling? Yeah, look, it's a tricky case because we haven't put up any evidence. Um, we're just basically saying that uh, either there's no case to answer or the, um, there's reasonable doubt in front of the jury, per se. Um, so the magistrate's making his decision now. Um, like I said, we haven't showed any evidence. It's not looking good. Um, but I guess we'll find out pretty soon um, the judgment. But there's always the avenue of appeal. Um, because we haven't presented any evidence, I've got a mountain of evidence to prove that... Uh, I was in the right and I was acting lawfully, but because we didn't produce any evidence, uh, we're putting it on the prosecution to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, that's our um, situation at the moment. So they're gonna, the magistrate's going to make a judgment whether it's reasonable what I did or not. Um, funnily enough, I, I think they may have me on a riotous behaviour because of uh, I was on a megaphone. Um, 
uh, saying uh, comments about certain uh, groups there at the event. But look, this, is, this goes back to selective policing. Only 10 people were charged out of that whole day at the, at the uh, my law event, 10 people. Now I know seven of them were on the right. Seven guys were charged and three lefties. What about the rest of the night where the Africans were chucking poles and rocks at us all night and attacking police, none of them were charged, it's been confirmed. Only 10 people, three lefties and seven right wingers. So all the Africans, and you've seen it on the news, going mental in uh, um, Flemington, none of them were charged. Uh, a lot of lefties weren't charged who were involved in this affray. So this goes back to selective policing. Police choose to ignore lefties on a megaphone saying things such as go kill yourself like Adolf Hitler. They didn't get charged for riotous behavior or cause an offense. I got charged for responding to them. So it comes down to selective policing, targeting of right-wing groups and ignoring the left-wing's actions at every event, not just this one, every event in the past. And are you the only one left? I'm the only one left. Ricky took a deal yesterday, so um, I had the option to take a deal, but I'm not gonna take a deal. I'm innocent and I'm gonna, if it goes badly today, which we're waiting on the judgment, I'll have to appeal and go through this process again. And this time, I'll be able to show my evidence in front of a jury in the county court. So the finding has been handed down, but you're a free man, so what happened? Yeah, I'm a free man. I was convicted on a, a tour to using a weapon, an assault with weapon, and uh, the affray. Um, look, this is the way it pans out. The, the judge, um, I'll let John tell you how it held transgressed. The magistrate accepted that at all times Neil Erickson was acting with a reasonable belief that what he did was to protect himself and his friends for whose protection he went in with the weapon. The magistrate accepted that Mr Erickson believed that, but he said it was unreasonable from an objective point of view. The rioters' behaviour charge was dismissed out of hand as being unreasonable in the circumstances and the other two assault charges were also dismissed. So what uh, was the sentence? 120 hours community service. So I'm going to be working uh, taking graffiti off walls. Um, I don't think I'm going to appeal. Look, I just want to put this behind me. It's been two and a half years nearly. Um, it's, it's a massive process and it really um, puts stress on your life uh, coming to court all the time. And so hopefully uh, put it behind me, go ahead. Um, yeah, so 120 hours community service, that's not too bad, yeah? So I'll do that and move on. So you escaped jail yet again. Are yet you, again. Are you going to maybe tone it down with your activism or? Yeah, I'm probably gonna, you know, I've got some things going on in my life. I'll probably kind of slide out of it, but you know, they keep pulling you back in. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but John, he's got a Blair Cottrell's case coming up soon, so I think that's the, the next one. Yeah, I think that could have international implications for Western world, of uh, USA, Canada, UK, and all of Australia, and New Zealand as well. And that's in the county court just across the road. It is. That's coming up. I think it's in August. I don't have the date to go. I don't have the diary, but I think it's in August. And we'll be running that. I think that'll be a relatively short case as well. The facts are obvious. It's the law that's complex. Be back here for that. You'll be back here for that. So that's the the next uh, legal case in the Patriot movement. <laughs> well, I don't know of any others. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're the Patriot lawyer, so that's what's bringing you back. I'm semi-retired. I'm going surfing. <laughs> Try and stay out of trouble this time. I'll try. I'll try. Uh, but look, it's a, it, it, it's it's a matter of circumstances that event. So, as I've said before, we didn't go there looking for a fight. It's pretty much proven we didn't go there looking for a fight. Uh, that's the situation. But it, it goes back to, as I said earlier, selective policing. Only ten people were charged out of that whole protest. Seven were patriots. Three were lefties. And no one from later, the riot later, no one was charged. So that's not the prosecutor's fault, it's not the magistrate's fault. If, you, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna charge people, you should charge people equally on a level playing field. And I believe there is something to, to ask the Victorian police as to why they choose or who they choose to charge. But look, today, I'm not in jail, thanks to John Bolton. Um, I've got 120 hours community service, not so bad. Um, I've seen worse days.